Oh man, oh man, oh man. Just looked at the unemployment filing numbers. 861,000 people filed for first time unemployment benefits last week. We are over halfway through February. We're coming upon the anniversary date of the first pandemic rolling layoffs that started in March. And it's, it's really interesting how if you look at the stock market, the stock market is surging. If you look at Bitcoin, it is surging. But if you look at the state of many Americans, they're literally about to be evicted, have their car repossessed. We're talking about, they say that 18 to 20 million people are on unemployment. And then let's go ahead and move this up to about 30, 35 million people who are in a very bad financial situation. And this is going to drag on the economy. It's going to perpetuate because this is a signal that the economy isn't getting better. And this is what Joe Biden is basing his stimulus packages on. So this is something else. While we had all of these massive layoffs, while we had all of these massive um, business closures, something crazy has been going on in Miami. Miami real estate prices surged 30% in 2020. You wanna know why? All of the tech firms from California and New York are heading south. They're taking their talents to South Beach. They're literally rolling into town, one billionaire after another. They're buying up property. It's been going crazy. So what, what does this represent? It represents the segmentation of our economy. And it really represents which part of the segment that you're in. Because um, I know that there are many moist, feminine men out there that don't believe that I'm doing as well as I am, even though I show them a Porsche, show them receipts, show them, eh, 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 no, Glendon, you black, brah, you can't be doing that well. I get it. And a shout out to all of the good, sensible, common people who support this channel and support me. So I appreciate you because it has become rather funny in recent days because essentially the hate comes in phases. <laughs> I'm like, I actually had a clown that posted on this channel, he didn't know what I did to make money, even though I talk about it often. He, he didn't know. And then I had another clown that was said, I agree with him because I took the government money. And let's talk about that. Last year, I was doing well. And one of the things is I realized that that's me, you know? And as an educator, as someone of personal influence, I should be doing things to help you. So for a lot of you getting this PPP money, getting this EDDIL money, that's gonna be a blessing. And I've adjusted my mindset to benefit you. But we have weak-minded, feminine moist men who are so jealous that they feel, because I actually took the money, I got the EDL loan the other day, that my business is in trouble and this is a red flag, even though this clown has not spent any money in, with me in 12 years. See, I'm talking about the segmentation of the economy. Um, there's this group that I follow on Clubhouse and it's a bunch of 
financially sophisticated black people and they were having a conversation yesterday about investing with debt and most of these people are very very savvy they know that you should not invest with a lot of consumer debt and it wasn't a reflection of the population at norm this this goes into the segmentation i'm talking about right now we've got 35 40 million people plus what's happening in texas is insane we got rolling blackouts in Texas. We've got people out there who are freezing, who are literally turning on the stove, huddling up in the kitchen to get some heat. And we got folks out there blowing 30 mil for a mansion in South Beach. So what, is, what does all this have to do with this? You know, from the feminine moist men to the 35 to 40 million people to the billionaires buying mansions in South Beach. It is about marketplace segmentation. Right now, there are 35, 40 million people who are really catching it. And it's really hard. It's really, really hard. And there's another group of people who are going out and buying properties in Brooklyn at a 1.8% 30-year fixed interest rate. And then you have another group of people who are buying oceanfront, beachfront property in Miami. And all of this is happening in the same timeline. This is all happening at the same time. So my, what I want to speak to is, you know, going back to 2019, 2018, 2017 what I was talking to you guys by starting the business. And once again, this presumption rears its head. You get to pick which market segmentation you are in. You could be one of those 30 to 40 million people who are really catching it, it's hard. Or you could be one of those black financially sophisticated people or you could be one of those moist jealous never done a damn thing in their life people or you could be someone that's entering into the millionaire class and even though there's a global pandemic you still do what you want to do with your life it's really on you like I feel that the high unemployment is going to continue for the rest of 2021. It's not going to go down. It's going to be record high. We're going to have more people unemployed. We're going to have more people with these bad financial situations. And we're going to have a group of people. Let's take this group of black folks on Clubhouse, the financially sophisticated. They know about stocks. They know about investments. They know about debt management. They know about, and you know, something else. There was a guy who was an NFL linebacker in the group. So it was a very different group of black people. And I feel in 2021, you're going to see the emergence of the cream of the crop because I don't know, I'm not Puerto Rican, but I, I used to be this Puerto Rican girl and she, she used to have this saying, hard times, hard times are not as hard as I am or something like that. So you're going to see who is real. Like the clown that's like, well, Glendon, you, you took the loan so your business can't be doing that well. Grant Cardone took the loan and made more money 2020 than he did in 2019. Let, let's, let's go ahead and speak to that. Why is it that if you are a black entrepreneur, you get checked harder by black people than white people? Like I said, I'm going to start this show, Real Entrepreneurs. Uh, it's going to be my first guest is going to be either a white dude or an Asian dude. And I don't get this kind of scrutiny that I do from people on my level. I don't get it at all. 
but I consistently get this feminine, moist comment, sniping. Like, this clown actually put on the channel. I don't know what you do to make money. I mean, really. And once again, you have this cognitive dissonance of people in the lower echelon, in the lower economic ranks, and this was something that they were talking about on Clubhouse, that how black people don't view debt as a constructive mechanism to make money. And like me, currently, I have like 40 credit cards and I think I got $500 on my personal credit. And then I've got this EDL loan, I got a PayPal loan that is about, I'll be finished paying that in about three or four months and then I got a Stripe loan. I have no problem loading up on debt for my company. If I can go ahead and get these dollars and then take these dollars and flip them and make more money, I'll do that all day. I have a problem with personal debt. And this is something that many people, it wounds people, it harms people because Let's say you're one of those 35 to 40 million unfortunate people in America right now and you have debt. That just makes the situation worse. It makes it really, really worse. And if you're in that position where you have car payments, credit card payments, student loan payments, you have all of that and then you lose your job and then you get behind on that, and then you get behind on your rent, it is very, very bad because your personal debt puts you in a position where you could not save money for the future. And, you know, once again, it is a symphony of economies. And right now, I know this may sound elitist, but right now, for some of my friends, they're making more money than they've ever made in their lives. This is the best economy for them. But on the same accord, you have people who are about to be evicted. You have people who don't have money to get food. You have people who are literally freezing in Texas right now, literally. Um, they're having these rolling blackouts. So all of this is happening in the same timeline. And it's up to you to pick and choose which economy you want to participate in. I know that sounds easy. That may sound like simple. That may even sound over the top. But let's go ahead and talk about when I chose to participate in this economy. I am 54 years old and uh, shout out to the folks who don't believe me every time I say that. I appreciate you folks, but I am 54 years old. And at the age of 34, because I went through the homeless thing at, and it was around 32. So from 32 to 34, I started to participate in the business owner economy. And that was hands down one of the best decisions that I've ever made in my life because the decisions that were made when I was 34 has led me to where I'm at at 54. And the first half of my economic life sucked. I was doing payday loans, I was going to the pawn shop, I was doing title pawn, and I was doing rent to own. Rent on. I was doing all of the dumb financial moves that you could imagine. But with this, making that decision to participate in the business class was a game changer for me. Right now, I know the feminine, moist men who just cannot stand and th this is something else if you are a person that gets mad or upset when you see someone winning that says a lot about who you are as a person 
Uh, Dr. J lives in this neighborhood, and I see him tooling around in his uh, classic Rolls Royce, and it makes me happy to see that this guy who has not dribbled a ball in what, three decades? Is still living well, doing well, living his life, looking good. That makes me happy. I'm not going, I'm not a hater. But if you are a hater, it's because you haven't done shit with your life. And you are just looking at other people and being mad, like the feminine moist men who like, essentially, I'm not going to engage with you clowns. I'm just going to delete your comment, block you and keep it moving. Because you're very feminine because you want attention like a woman. Because this is one of the things, let, let me go ahead and tell you, like what will happen is if I, if I respond back, they're going to respond back because they want attention. <laughs> and it's never going to be anything productive or positive. I was completely shocked when it was like, I don't know what you do, man. And then this dude went ahead, it's in the comments, and went ahead and list all these other people. I know what they do. And you know, he put in me, Kevin. He accused me. Now I went on record that I wasn't gonna do stimulus talk videos because I felt that that was unfair. And then he accused me of chasing trends on YouTube, which I really don't do. And then he brought up Meet Kevin, who actually does the thing he accused me of doing. And one of the things that I'm beginning to understand about humans is when you hate so hard, it defies, it, it defies logic, it defies reason, and you know, that's going to be the new policy, because essentially, once again, I've explained in great detail why I changed my position on taking this government money, because as an entrepreneur, this could create dramatic stimulus for you, and once again, I want you to win. You know, I, I'm, I'm starting to pay attention to what you guys are going through and ignoring. I mean, I mean, I'm going to have I'm going to have 10 racks in my personal checking account into this month from my business. And that is exceptional. See, because I know the numbers of what people have and how much cash people have. I know that it's exceptional. I know that. I live a blessed life. I live a good life. I eat well, I sleep well, I drive well, I create well. So I am living a dream for many people, just to be factual about that. But that's not going to help you. It's not gonna help you. And I'm getting ready to make some adjustments to my content and to my delivery and to my training to better benefit you. Because, you know, last two weeks I've been sick. Uh, I'm, I'm starting to feel better. It's just sucked. And during that time, you know, when I wasn't producing anything, I was just, um, I was just um, thinking and thinking and thinking about when I used to be poor, when I didn't have the money. Like, I'm in a position, anything I see in a catalog or whatever I want, I could just go get it. And I even use credit, I could use cash or credit or whatever. And I'm thinking about the journey. How did we get here? What steps? What happened? What did I do? What decisions? And I'm going to really start breaking that down for a more elemental reason because um, for my haters, for all of you clowns, for all of you weak, for all of you moist, for all of you unaccomplished, let's go ahead and say this. None of y'all have done anything in life and it's killing you. And you can choke on that for all I care, because they ain't got nothing to do with me. So leave your weak, 
feminine sensitive comments to yourself and find another YouTuber to harass, because that's all it is, it's just harassment. It's nothing constructive, it's nothing good, because you don't believe in yourself. You have no energy, you have no hope, you have no mission, you have no urgency. You're just here on earth sucking up oxygen. That's all you're doing. And then when you see someone winning, it hurts your little heart. Here in the South, it's like, bless his little heart. Bless your little heart, because you ugly. <laughs> you don't have no game. But yeah, that's what's going on economically. So are you going to choose which economic sector that you want to be in? Because it's a choice. It's a passive choice or it's an intentional choice. Either you're going to do these things to move yourself to where you want to be or you're not. So that's your economic report today. If you want to transition to a new economic sector, I have the corporate toolbox. What I have below is I'll teach you how to set up a holding company. I'll teach you how to set up an operating company. I'll teach you how to make it tax efficient, and I'll teach you how to start a business from scratch. Links below. So with that, I'll talk to you guys in the next one.